Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Band in a Bedroom. My name is Chris Hallinan, and as always, I'm going to be sharing something with you that's pretty fun and uh, pretty fundamental when it comes to uh, recording your music. Um, it's how to bounce your files, which basically, in case you don't know what bouncing is, bouncing is the act of recording all of your sounds in the file that's including uh, your effects and all the other information that might be in your recording and converting that into a stereo file. Um, the reason that's important is maybe let's say you're done with a recording and you're just trying to figure out how to get it off Pro Tools. It's not as easy as just telling Pro Tools, I'm done, that's it. Um, so put it on my phone now. You know, it doesn't just sync up through Bluetooth or any kind of magical, um, you know, gizmo. None, none that I've ever heard of anyway. So this is the, the, the kind of textbook way on basically how to get your files and, and ultimately your session onto your, your phone in the end, or you put it on, uh, you can put it on SoundCloud or put it on wherever after this. Or you could email it to friends or just email it to yourself and hear it over and over and over again. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter. So, but either way, I digress. Um, I'm gonna be sharing with you the two ways that you can do that. And the first way is bouncing to disc. Uh, what bouncing to disk does is it um, it basically just bounces your files to uh, your hard drive on your computer. Um, it saves it as a one file. Um, and another way that you can bounce files or another technique that's known in the bouncing world is uh, bouncing to track. And what bouncing to track does is it allows you to bounce your information from your session and then import it back into your session so that's useful it's like if you're uh if if you're multi-tracking guitar for instance and you have like 20 guitar tracks and you don't want to have to sit there and you know have to basically you know stir through them all you can actually put them all into one track so um i'm going to be showing you how to do both um right now all right so moving forward the first thing we're going to want to do is create a master fade bounce on your master fader and we're going to want to create that towards the end of the song. And that's easy to find because you just look to where the end or where your last waveform is. Ours is um, around the, f uh, the first bar of 166. So we're going we're gonna to just draw in, draw in our breakpoints real quick. If you don't know how to draw in breakpoints, uh, I'm going to show you. So all you do is you hold down Control and then you click where you want it to be here and I'll move the master fader so you can really see exactly what I'm doing so I'm gonna create my breakpoints a little bit slightly after the waveform ends just because I want it to be a natural sounding fade I don't want it to sound like I drew this in so I'm gonna draw my first breakpoint in right here hold down control and I just click the mouse and then I'm gonna put my second one over here And then you just click down on that second dot, you just drag down, and boom. You see now my volume will be represented by this line right here. If you don't see this line, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is uh, look to your master fader, and you're going to see this volume tab. Um, all you got to do is just click it, make sure you click volume, and you should see this line up here. Now once I have my breakpoints drawn in, I'm going to want to create a selection for my bounce range. So let me move the master fader back down here. I'm a little OCD, so I like it where it belongs. So to do that, and the reason for doing this is if you don't, you're going to most likely end up with extra or unnecessary sound in the beginning of your song or at the end. Um, and you don't want that because you want it to end perfectly right where your song ends because if you're putting this with a mixtape or you're putting this with, this with some other songs you don't want there to be some long gap of you know silence right before your next song so what you do is you select so i'm, I'm going to do this on the master fader so uh you click that that dot or that break point i should say i'm gonna use proper vocab on this video so you're going to click in uh, right where that second break point is. And you hold down the shift key. And then you're going to hit return or enter. And boom, that highlights 
from where you clicked all the way to the beginning of the session, which is perfect because if you look, that's where uh, everything starts right here. So now that that's selected, let me just double check, and it is selected. You're going to go up to File right here. You're going to click File. You're going to go to Bounce To, and you're going to select Disk. Once you select Disk, you get a few options right here. Um, you're going to want to bounce to Stereo. Uh, for File Type, you get to select. You can select either Wave, AIFF, or MP3. I'm going to leave it on Wave for today. Um, for Format, you get a couple of different options. You can select mono, which is going to be a summed up version of your left and right mix. And if you work really hard on effects and panning and having different things coming out of the left side versus the right side, I really don't recommend using this unless you're going for some specific mono summed up reason. Um, multiple mono, that's, that's another uh, selection that you might use, you might not use. What it is is it, it, it gives you two, two, uh, two tracks individual left and right and um that's going to be really hard for somebody to listen to because you're only going to get um a, you know half of the mix if they try to click on the file so what we're going to leave it on is interleave that's going to probably be your preferred um format and for bit depth um you're going to want to you know if you're, if you're bouncing this to cd or you're going to put this somewhere out there on the internet yeah, I recommend, you know, 16-bit and sample rate on 44.1. But the rule of thumb is generally it's whatever you record it at. But for today, we're going to leave it at 16. And right here in this little selection of checks and boxes, uh, you get a couple different selections as well. You can enforce media composer compatibility. You can import after bounce. Um, or you can add to iTunes library. We're going to talk a little bit about import after bounce in just a second. And right here, you would just go and you can name the, the file type whatever you'd like. Um, in this case, the song's name is Life Been Good. And then you can select wherever you want your file to be saved at. Right now, it's going to save it into the destination folder that I have it chosen, um, which is my bounced files. But let's talk about this checkbox right here. I wanted to cover this a little later, and I told you that I would. So this right here is how you bounce to a track, or how you get your bounce back into the session. Uh, you want to make sure that this is checked when you, when you do so. And that'll be useful. You're not going to do that every time. You're only going to do that if, let's say, uh, you have multiple guitar tracks and you're just trying to free up some space in your session. Uh, this would be a great way for you to do so and put all of your guitar tracks onto one. Or, you know, uh, maybe you have multiple background vocalists or whatever it might be. This is how you get uh, multiple tracks onto one. So you want to make sure that this is checked. And um, I'll give you an example right here. I have a few guitar tracks, actually. Here, let me uncheck, unsolo these. So I have a few guitar tracks. I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guitar tracks. And, I mean, those are just strictly playing rhythm guitar, too. Those aren't playing any melody throughout any of these this song. It's not playing any solos. Th those are actually on different tracks down here. Um, so these seven tracks are just strictly chords, and that's a lot of guitar tracks to be dealing with. Um, so to make it easier on myself, what I can do is I'll solo all these out. And then I'm going to want to select the range of my bounce. So go to back here where the ending of song is and we'll click to here and you can either drag all the way left and highlight like that or you can go down and we'll do oops excuse me let me get this or you can do Shift enter and that'll go all the way from your the back of the song to the beginning 
and I'm only selecting the guitar tracks right now just to be clear so I'm gonna put these seven tracks onto one so we'll open up the bounce window you can do control alt B that opens up your bounce window or you can go up here to file just go to bounce two. either or will work and I already says guitars that's funny so we'll name this guitars and we'll keep all this the same and we'll make sure that this is checked right here import after bounce we'll bounce real quick all right now the next window that pops up you get the choice to either pick a new track or you can shoot it to the clip list i like to just create a new track in this situation because like i mentioned we're putting it back into the session um, and it puts it conveniently in a track named what you named it. So it named this one Guitars. So if I give you an example right here, and we click in right here and we just hit play. So those that's all seven playing, all right? Now, if we uncheck these... Out of solo I'm gonna show you now exactly what happened with uh, the guitars so I'll solo this out this is the new track the new gu guitars track right here and I'll hit play <laughs> So put it all into one track. In fact, it actually made it a little louder, which is kind of cool. And it, it just frees up the computer from having to work so hard, honestly. And right here, if you look down here, you get this little offline uh, checkbox. What this is going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is very important for your mix, okay? Um, if, you, if you leave this unchecked and you hit bounce, what's going to happen is you're going to hear your entirety of your mix being played here let's do it so you're gonna hear the entirety of your mix being played and what's kind of cool about this is quick all right so what's kind of cool about that is you get to just sit back and listen you know and, and this is one last final chance for you to you know make any type of adjustments or catch anything that might have slipped through um, any type of errors or mixing mistakes or just something that you didn't want in the final mix um, this is your final chance basically to hear that before you bounce it and uh, and 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 you leave it into a uh, file so what I really recommend doing, folks, is leaving this on, uh, leaving this unchecked. So that way, as it's bouncing, you get one last, you know, play through as you can hear it, and uh, you really just get to check and make sure um, that e everything, all the levels, are where they need to be, and uh, ever all the effects, everything's panned right. And this is important if you're going to send it off to a client or uh, if you're going to post this online somewhere, you want to make sure that your mix sounds the way you want it to sound. You don't want, you don't want it to sound uh, anything less than that. So uh, if you leave this unchecked while it's bouncing, it'll bounce live. And what that just basically means, to sum it up, um, is you can hear it as it's bouncing live. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and uh, I, like I said, I, I, I strongly advise it. If you do, for whatever reason though, like if you, if you do check it, what's going to happen is you'll still bounce your song. Everything will come out sounding uh, exactly, you know, the way it's supposed to sound. Um, but it's going to do it instantaneously or, or, or as fast as your computer can, can handle. You know, in most cases, it's pretty instant. Um, and I'll give you an example of that. So as you saw a second ago, I clicked it. And it started to play the song as it was bouncing. So look, I'll do it again. So I off click, I, I I unclicked this, unchecked it, and I'm gonna click bounce. This little window pops up, and you hear the guitars. So you hear the guitars almost right away. And that's just because I don't have the guitars actually in the beginning of the song, right on uh, right on beat one. But this is what happens if you leave that unchecked.
Okay, and that would have played the whole song, and I can listen to it and make sure that everything's good. And if I didn't, if if something was off, then I just go and make my adjustment and stop the bounce, and then rebounce it. So if I leave if I leave that box checked now, this is what's going to happen. I click bounce, and you see it's starting to bounce, but there's no audio coming through. There's nothing being played. It's just letting me know that four minutes and fifty six. Um, minutes are, are being processed you know that's that's the length of the song is four minutes and 56 seconds shout out to long songs and guitar solos out there if you know what i mean but um uh, yeah so i like i said i recommend always leaving that just as a little you know piece of advice for you guys i, I recommend leaving that unchecked just so that way you guys can you know just kick back and just check it out just hear what hear what the beat sounds like hear what your song sounds like and it's a cool time to whip out the phone and you can start you know like dan check it out this is this is what i made right here type of shiz you know what i mean like and you can post that on your instagram or wherever i mean you know so i uh i like i said just leave that offline or leave it leave that unchecked <laughs> leave offline unchecked and that completes this band in a bedroom tip of the day. Uh, I hope I covered the subject well enough for you guys to uh, really understand how to bounce your files and get them from Pro Tools onto your phone or onto SoundCloud, like I mentioned before, and show your friends and family like it deserves to be shown. Uh, if I did leave anything out, though, uh, as I mentioned before, um, please let me know in the comment section below and um, I'll get back to you or I'll respond. And also, uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. That would really help me out and I'd really appreciate that. Um, it'll help me out with my music journey along the way. And uh, before I go, I just want to mention one more thing. If you guys ever have any uh, requests, any music tutorial requests that you specifically want me to uh, to attempt to cover, I I'd love to, to take a chop at it. You know, like just let me know in the comments section below. You can also DM me in my Instagram and um and i'll get back to you you know and I'll, even if it's something that i'm not sure or i'm, I'm not too familiar with you know like I, i'll still make a video on it and i'll try to figure it out we'll figure it out together you know what i mean so um so but i just want to let you guys know that um and uh yeah so uh, before i get ahead of myself start talking gibberish and extend this video too long uh i'm gonna leave with uh letting you guys know as always i'm chris hallinan and i'll see you guys next time